Recently at the St. Illuminator Cathedral's Christmas decorated Pashalian Hall took place a unique cultural event titled What's in a Name? The illustrated lecture by writer and editor Garabed Kasparian on the etymology of the Armenian surnames. This lecture was organized to celebrate the online release of Mr. Kasparian's Dictionary of Armenian Surnames and the 30th anniversary of his weekly column, Uncle Garabed's Notebook, appearing in the Armenian Weekly. The event was co-sponsored by St. Illuminators Cathedral and the Hamas Kain Regional Executive Eastern USA. We are honored and privileged to host this unique event, said Reverend Father Mezrob Lakisian. He introduced Garabed Kasparian, Uncle Garabed, as he is also called in the Armenian community. In sharing Uncle Garabed's biography, Dead Mezrob described how Garabed came to study and compile Armenian surnames first as a hobby and later in order to assist fellow Armenians in deciphering their own names. C.K. Garabet, the pen name of Charles Kasparian, was born and raised in Union City, New Jersey, also known as Little Dikranagit. He was being active in the Armenian church and Armenian community organization all his life. Garabet is former member of St. Ulumitas Cathedral's choir and was married in this very cathedral. As a writer and editor, Garabet has been a keen observer of and outspoken commentator on political and social matters affecting Armenian Americans. Garabet has been a regular contributor to the Armenian Reporter and the AGBU Literary Reporter Ar Ararat for nearly 30 years. Garabet has been a regular contributor to the Armenian Weekly. He produces an ongoing column called Uncle Garabet's Notebook. My favorite column, by the way. For the past 18 years, each column has contained the construction of an Armenian surname. In his talk, which was assisted by his daughter, Lucine Kasparian, who used visual examples through a slideshow projection, Uncle Garabed described the Arabic and Persian influence on Armenian language, bringing examples of different words that have the same root. I wish to emphasize, first and foremost, that I'm not a linguist or philologist, and certainly not an expert on names or languages. I am simply an ordinary fellow who has taken an interest in Armenian surnames. Forty years ago, I started collecting names from church telephone directories and donor lists as a hobby. At first manually, then with the aid of a personal computer. I have collected well over 10,000 names to date, though not all of them are defined yet. Let's start with the, with the Indo-European language branch of the human language tree. An original mother tongue, the provenance of which has never been determined, is the source of the Indo-European branch, seen in the highlighted area, which includes Armenia. Recent scholarship suggests that contrary to what was believed to be true of the order of languages in the branch, Armenian has now been given a more prominent place. Starting from the base of the Proto-Indo-European branch, we see the European languages off to the left, and then to the right are the Anatolian languages which are extinct. And then in between is the ariano greco armenio branch, the following is a segment of the same illustration, enlarged and colorized. From that orange point to the left are the Greek languages, and to the right, the armeno aryan languages seen in red. Then we come immediately to Armenian, which is a continuation of the red, followed by the yellow group that includes Persian, and subsequently to Sanskrit, that includes the Indian tongues, Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, etc. Thus, we see that Armenian is closer to the mother tongue source than Persian, and that Armenian and Persian are no longer believed to be derived from Sanskrit. This slide shows the movement of the language. It is now believed 
that the Indo-European model originated in Anatolia and spread west to Europe and east to India. Also, it is now believed that the language spread not by horseback, as previously assumed, but by farming. Uncle Garabed continued his lecture by discussing the origins of the Armenian surnames and the detective work involved in researching name derivations and deconstructing highly unusual ones. Curiosity was my first motivation for exploring the subject of Armenian family names. Armenian surnames can be classed generally in seven categories, such as aristocracy, patronymic, occupation, geographic origin, physical trait, general descriptive, and special circumstances. Armenians who are direct descendants of dynastic nobility still carry their ancestral family names. These names usually have the ending uni, examples Arshaguni, Arzruni, and Rushtuni. Mr. Kasparian brought examples of Armenian surnames with Persian roots and of Armenian surnames with Arabic roots. Gulhasyan, best variety of rose. Shahbazian, royal falcon. Zargaryan, jeweler. Examples of names that contain Arabic roots are Habeshyan, which is a native of Abyssinia or Ethiopia. Jelalyan, which means majesty or glory. And Maksudyan, which means design or intention. Examples of names that contain Turkish roots are Boyajan, which is a painter or a dyer or an artist. Dermenjan, which is a miller and Kazanjan, which is a kettle, boiler, or cauldron maker. As with the general vocabulary, we tend to assume that many Armenian surnames reflect Turkish roots, when in fact a closer examination reveals that many of them are borrowed from Persian and Arabic, which were a significant part of the Ottoman Turkish language. Examples are Najarian, which means carpenter, from Arabic. Nalbandian, a blacksmith specializing in the shoeing of horses, from Persian. Nakashian, an engraver, from Arabic. In his research, the author also found reversed Armenian Nakashian, names in India. Very often, Armenian surnames Arabic. changed in spelling in different countries. Because of the length of some Armenian surnames and the difficulty in their pronunciation, some Armenians have changed their family names. In some cases, it was done by removing the IAN ending, and in others, by adapting to the customs of a new country. This practice, especially among the Armenian merchants who settled in India, has produced some surnames which are very hard to recognize as being Armenian. Examples are Aswazadurian, which means God-given, evolved to Chater, Harutunyan, which means resurrection, to Aratun, Mardirosyan, or Martyr, to Marty Rose, Mugardichyan, Baptist, to Makartich, and Sarkisyan, which means rainbow, to Serkis. One historical reference is that Jews were permitted by Germany to select their own surnames, but Armenians were assigned surnames by their Turkish occupiers. An interesting parallel can be drawn between the Jews of Germany and the Armenians of Turkey. In both cases, sometime about the 18th century, the rulers of those countries mandated the adoption of family names in the language of the host or occupying countries. The difference is that whereas the German Jews were often permitted to select their names, the Turkish Armenians were often assigned names by local officials. Thus came about the adoption by Jews of beautiful names such as Morgenthau, Morning Dew, Schoenberg, Beautiful Mountain, Blumenthal, Bloomingdale, Mandelbaum, Almond Tree, Saperstein, Sapphire Stone. The Armenians, on the other hand, were as often as not given uncomplimentary names in derision. For example, Chirkinian, ugly. 
Jambazian, swindler. Tekirian, marked with spots. Topalian, lame or crippled. Zulumian, cruel, oppressive. Armenian names may possess endings such as Yan, Yans, Oglu, and Ov, but their stems determine their basic meaning. Additionally, Uncle Garabed brought examples of strange, humorous, and unusual Armenian surnames. Other strange, humorous, and unusual names. As an interesting aside, I would mention that during the 1930s name change law, those who had changed their names earlier now had to register their names. Others were forced to take on new names. Ajalejan, someone always in a hurry. Altaparmakian, one with six fingers. The name would be applied to someone who was possessed of great dexterity, such as a musician who played a string instrument with great skill so as to make one believe he had six fingers. Bujukanyan, which is Turkish. Bujuk is half, and An is man. Half a man for a short man. Boynuburukyan, which is Turkish. One with a twisted neck. <laughs> Chukhasuzyan, which is Turkish, without a winter overcoat. Dadekyan, which is Armenian derivation. According to Zavan Dadekyan, this surname was originally Dadekyan. Research confirms this and furthermore reveals that that Dadek is a variant of Dader, in turn a variant of Dadar, which is a conflation of Dada and Ara. Dada being the diminutive for David and Ara a term of respect for a gentleman, sir. Dosh Oglanyan, which is Turkish. Dosh is breast and Oglan is boy, literally breast boy. Figuratively, a young man who proudly thrusts his chest forward. Kanayan, which is Turkish in derivation. Khan is Turkish for blood or bloody. From Khuda Verdi in the Lake Urmia region, there came five brothers to Igdir. They were a rough crowd and became land barons, then became respectable. This comes compliments of Mardi Kanayan, son of General Dro, whose full name was Drastamat Kanayan. Kardashian, perhaps the best known Armenians in the United States are the Kardashian sisters. The name Kardash means brother in Turkish and stonemason in Armenian. Courtney Kardashian, sister of Kim, named her son Mason, which leads us to believe that there may have been Masons somewhere in the Kardashian family tree. Kavazanjan which is part Armenian, part Turkish in derivation, a staff or cane maker or seller. Minas Arakelian suggests that Kabazan is derived from the Persian words gav for cow and asa for rod or stick, thus a cow prod. Kulak Suzyan, which is Turkish in derivation, literally without an ear, figuratively having no ear for music. Mahsavanshan, which is Armenian derivation. One who dreams nightmares. Shil Gevorkan, which is Turkish and Greek in derivation. Shil is cross-eyed. Gevork is George, thus cross-eyed George. Now you might ask why people perpetuate strange, unusual, or even uncomplimentary names. After all, it's easy to just change them by adaptation. People often are attached to their names because it gives them a sense of continuity and tradition. There is also the desire to honor their martyrs by perpetuating the memory of their identity as Armenian Christians. I am reminded of a story in this regard. American citizen of Armenian extraction wished to legally change his name, and in applying to the court of jurisdiction, appeared before, for a hearing before a judge. The judge addressed the applicant. I understand you wish to change your name. What is it? The applicant replied, Jack Beshiktashlian. The judge replied, I don't blame you. 
what do you wish to change it to? The applicant replied, Joe Beshiktashlia. <laughs> Incidentally, Beshiktas means stone cradle. It is, it is also the name of a district in Istanbul. Uncle Garabet's lecture shed light on how Armenians came to acquire their surnames, the definitions of which happened to cover the gamut of our ancestors' life activities in the old country. To close the event, Mrs. Arvig Kaprielian of the Hamaskain Regional Executive expressed words of appreciation to Uncle Garabet for his unique research illuminating the Armenian identity. On behalf of St. Illuminators Cathedral, Ded Mesro presented Uncle Garabet a certificate of appreciation for his years of of outstanding service, contributions, and commitment to the Armenian community. A lively discussion and Q&A followed the program. Uncle Garabet's presentation encompasses more than 40 years of research on the subject of the Armenian surnames. This historic investigative work adds an important voice to the story of the Armenian legacy, history, and identity.